Welcome back, Guardians. In the last report, we discussed the oddity flowing through the tower, seen in different places at roughly the same time each week. Xur remains one of the few tangible elements we see of the elusive Nine, but as addressed in the previous entry, we failed to completely explain everything regarding the proposed Puppet Masters. The Nine remain out of our reach, at least with the information gathered. One piece of text is all that illuminates the supposed existence of the Nine, a document that is cryptic in translation and equally devious, suggesting that our traveler is not whom it may seem. This report will attempt to interpret the information provided, but be forewarned. This is just one potential of an increasing multitude of definitions of the Nine. With that stated, there are two popular versions on how to interpret the fragment. Firstly, and often the most accepted, is that the nine sentences generalize the entire group. Each one of the nine is a war mind from beyond the Jovians, with a hidden hand in all the galaxy's organizations and operations. The second interpretation is not often found in circulation, but no less viable for this report. It would propose that each one of the nine sentences references a specific entity of the nine, that they are not all war minds, and each entity may not share the same version of existence. In essence, they are unique. Some are considered to be war minds, others could be intelligence transcending mortal coils, and yet some others may be an intelligence moving through currents of electricity and light, never remaining stationary. We will begin with the first passage. It speaks of an uneasy alliance designed for continued survival amongst the Sea of Chaos. The Nine are survivors of the Cis Jovian colonies who made a compact with an alien force to ensure their own survival. A cryptic passage to be sure, but potentially the most accessible. Cis Jovian can be defined in a few interesting ways. Firstly, it is considered an adjective for planets, essentially meaning inside Jupiter or inside Jupiter's orbit in our solar system. The Cis Jovian colonies would be Earth's moon, Mars, Phobos, the asteroid belt, and any planetary body or station in between. The second portion is slightly more difficult to fully understand. Most commonly proposed is the Nine's workings with the Awoken of the Reef, imposing a certain unseen will upon the Queen and her subsidiaries, particularly that of the Crows. Multiple ghost fragments and texts regarding the Reef Awoken often speak of the Nine. However, this does not mean we can attribute this to any alliance of survival. It could be possible that the Nine have allied themselves with a yet unknown alien power, continuing to mask its presence to the Guardians of the Tower. The second passage is one of the few that refers to the Nine as War Minds. However, it applies the plural and not the singular tense, further promoting the interpretation that the Nine are indeed of humanity's creation, but no longer bound to its will. The Nine are deep orbit war minds who weather the collapse in hardened stealth platforms. Anything from the Golden Age, surviving the collapse is considered incredibly valuable, especially intelligences with access to orbital war platforms, caches of knowledge and information regarding our unrelenting enemy, the Darkness. We know that survival of the collapse is possible. Rasputin on Earth remained relatively untouched from the onslaught of the Darkness but it had to choose its own survival over that of countless innocent lives. Perhaps we can assume that the Deep Orbit War Mines did the same, sacrificing an uncountable number of souls, ensuring that they could continue on. Reinforcing the War Mind interpretation is another passage regarding the accumulation of knowledge the Nine may possess, and how they may have hidden from the encroaching darkness during the Collapse. It states, the Nine are ancient Leviathan intelligences from the seas of Europa or the hydrocarbon pits of Titan. The four largest of Jupiter's moons were often called the Galilean satellites from our old Earth records. Europa is the smallest but is still considered to be geologically active and we can assume during the Golden Age humanity had some presence near or on the moon as references indicate a significant ocean beneath the ice sheet. Titan, the largest of Saturn's moons, is one of the few orbital moons in our system to have any significant atmosphere. 
Humanity has not ventured to the frigid moon since the collapse, and 94 Kelvin, or negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit, would often deter even the bravest of guardians. This information does allow for a potential place for these war mines to hide. Humanity would have only had token outposts on these moons, research stations with population parameters under any significant amount to be deemed worthy by our enemies. An excellent place to stay cloaked from any external or internal threats. The next group of passages begin to test our understanding of space and the ability to travel through it. We know humanity has ventured beyond the system into the heliopause, but no records indicate we have traveled into any other system, let alone another galaxy. The next passage begins, The Nine arrived at a mysterious transmission from the direction of the Corona Borealis Supercluster. The Corona Borealis Supercluster is one of the largest clusters of galactic bodies in the observable universe, and the Hercules Corona Borealis Wall is roughly 10 billion light years across, occupying one ninth of the observable universe. It is monstrous. Even with the larger bodies of the galactic clusters we have seen in the entire universe, the Corona Borealis is impossibly large. Our local cluster is in the Lanikea Supercluster, which contains four specific parts, one of which is the Virgo Supercluster, which is home to our galaxy, the Milky Way. The Corona Borealis takes our relative large size and diminishes it by an innumerable factor. Could this transmission allude to information regarding the origins of the Traveler, or perhaps the Darkness? Or is it another entity remaining undefined? The next passage specifically references the Awoken, as if the Nine are precursors to the Awoken that occupy the Tower and the Reef. It reads, The Nine are the firstborn Awoken, and their minds now race down the field lines of the Jupiter Io flux tube. This information could illuminate the relationship between the Nine and the Awoken previously discussed. The Nine may have had a hand in creating the Awoken, as Xur is a combination of cells with its will largely removed. This relationship could be akin to the creation of the XO, as many would believe that humanity constructed them during the Golden Age. Regardless of any interpretation applied, the Nine undoubtedly understand the Awoken better than any tome or text in the Tower's libraries. Truly, this knowledge is something to be admired. Another passage talks of the ghosts, pieces of light created by the Traveler to seek out guardians and knowledge that would keep the city safe. It states, The Nine are ghosts who pierced the deep black without a ship and meditated on the hissing silence of the Heliopause. The Heliopause is roughly 11 billion miles from our sun in the solar system, and it is noted as an area that has a sharp increase in cosmic rays from outside our system. Humanity has sent spacecraft to this region in the past, most notably Old Earth's Voyager 1. This was pre-Golden Age tech, but we can assume that ghosts are not subject to cosmic radiation as other materials may be. The heliopause is the final boundary between our system and interstellar space. It is the edge of humanity's grasp, the void, a sea of eternal blackness. For a ghost or group of ghosts to travel here and stop all analytical thought and begin to question the very nature of the universe around them is incredibly troubling. Why did they venture so far from home only to question themselves? What did they see? The next passage is difficult to fully develop, as it may depend upon the reader and his or her unique interpretation, but this report will attempt to do both sides of the argument justice. The Nine are the aspects of the darkness, broken by the Traveler's rebuke, working to destroy us from within. In the former report regarding Xur, the question of ignorance was placed upon our trade. We remain in the dark of these strange coins and their ultimate purpose, yet we give them away freely. Perhaps we are losing more than simple coins, something much more dire. Perhaps we are limiting ourselves in this way, playing into the hands of the Nine and the Darkness. The second interpretation would state that the Traveler and by relationship the Speaker are not our allies. This theory is reinforced by dissecting the Golden Age and its eventual collapse as the collapse and the appearance of our enemies would have never occurred if the Traveler simply skipped our solar system for another. 
This theory does present unaccounted contradictions, mainly that Earth and humanity were dying, caused by centuries of mistreatment, and if the Traveler had left us, this debate would not exist. Perhaps it could not pass us over. You were the final option, the only hope for its future, or it, the only hope for ours. Or perhaps we are being fooled. The blanket of perjury being placed upon our scalp and eyes, blinding our vision. Continuing forward, the final two passages remain, equally perplexing but full of possibility. The next passage reads, The Nine is a viral language of pure meaning. The most common interpretation is knowledge. The Nine are intelligence beyond the scope of mortal frames, transcendent from matter and material. Their minds exist outside the framework of existence, and they simply just are. However, it could also refer to an unwanted invitation of intelligence. Often viral does not have generous connotations, as it is linked to illness and death. Perhaps the Nine have more strength than currently comprehensible. Their ability to create Xur from different cells and bodies is a science not often copied by nature. The final passage is particularly telling. It concerns the Nine's opposition with the darkness. The Nine are shadows left by the annihilation of a transcendent shape, burn into the weft of what is. The Nine saw the collapse, or even experienced it firsthand. They were terrorized and defeated by a force void of reason and compassion. They were pushed to the edge, forced to examine the abyss from an uncomfortably close vantage point as they saw their essence stripped from them, slowly and callously. Ultimately, this report remains, again, unfinished. There are too many questions, too many liberties being taken, and too much conjecture to be considered fact. It has failed you. The knowledge we have and the truth we seek are not often found together. We ask these questions because it is who we are, because we wish to be defined by what we know. We may always remain ignorant of who the Nine are in their purest form, but we will not halt at the first sign of opposition. We are inquisitive by nature. So as long as we stand defiant in the field, we will never lose this trait. Stay safe, Guardians.